I have a PDF with several documents in it that could be PDFs that I want to split with Power Automate Desktop. That is straightforward. Let me show you how. In this PDF, we have six different documents. You can find these file samples by clicking the link in the description below or choose your own. We can choose a prompt dialog that will prompt the user for the path to this document. We could also choose a variable. In here, we will have a display select file dialog that will prompt the user that comes up on the screen and ask the user. So here I'll say, please provide the path of the PDF you want to split. Then I want an initial folder. That is where our prompt will start in. So click this folder. here. Usually you might want to start in documents. But since I have a desktop with a project folder on, I'll start here. It doesn't make really a lot of sense to look for more files than PDF. So I can say look for each every file that is the asterisk, but only those ones that will end with dot PDF. I can also say, do I want this prompt to go on top? Yes, please. Allow multiple selection. I'll create the full solution that can take as many documents as you want with the PDFs in, but for now we will have it once. Check if file exists, doesn't really matter. It will exist when the user picks it automatically, but we can actually enable it if the user for somehow provide an illegal path. Then we want to say the variables produced that is selected file. I want to rather have it in selected PDF file. So always rename your variables so you can see what's going on and your colleague can see what's going on. It looks like this. So I run it and this will prompt the user. So I can, for example, pick uh, the first PDF that I got here and the flow will stop because we have no more actions. Here we have the path to the PDF here. And that's what I said, you can have a set variable or this path could come from different places in your flow. This solution is just with display select file dialog, but feel free to change it. Now we want to split it. Our strategy is to create a loop that takes the first page out, the second page out, so forth. In this PDF, we have six pages. So when it tries with page seven, it will fail and we will take advantage of that. So let's create the solution. I'll find a set variable. This one will keep track of what page we are at. So the name, we will call it something meaningful again, like page count. And then I'll give it the value one because the first page is always page one. This isn't a value from the document. This is just a value that we give it. It corresponds to this page number up here. You can see that the first page is always page one, even though we have no page number in it. So a variable that will always exist in the document, there will always be a page one. I'll also use if I want to create some sort of a detailed error handling, uh, then I want a set variable with a status in. So I'll just say status and I'll give it the status OK. For now, everything is OK, but that's, that could change. Then I can click Save. Now I want to make the loop that will loop all the pages that might be here in the selected PDF file. I'll find a loop condition. And I'll drag this one in here. So the loop condition is a loop that runs over and over as long as a condition is true. That means that if something didn't uh, don't change this condition, then this loop will run forever. It's not really ideal. So we also we always want something to change that changes it. So the first operand I'll run on my status here. If that is equal to OK, then I can run the loop like this. Now I can extract the files. So first I will uh, go up here, then I'll find an extract PDF file, uh, PDF file pages to a new PDF file. Here I can say I only want to take a, a certain page number out and extract that to a PDF. And so the PDF file, that is the file that we got select that we selected up here, selected PDF file. So click this X, double click the selected PDF file. The page selection. Well, we have a value for that. That is the page count. 
that is one in the first instance, we need to add one to this page count each time the loop runs. Otherwise, it will stay at page one. We will fix that when we are finished here. Where do I want to extract it to? I think it makes a lot of sense to extract it to whatever directory that this file up here is in. So I click this X and then I'll say selected PDF file. I will expand it and then I will find the directory. Double click it. Now I want to make a little prefix on into the PDF file names. So I will say backslash and then I'll say split and then I'll use the name uh, that uh, we have originally from up here. So I'll take this one here then I'll find uh, the selected PDF file and then I'll find the name this. If the file exists and it will do because we extract it over and over, then we want to give it a little number. We could also use the page count for that. But for now, the add sequential suffix is working fine. If you have a password on your PDF, you can go into advanced and specify that. The variable produced that will be extracted PDF. That is fine for now. So then I can click save. We said that we want to split each one of the pages. Right now we only have page one. So we need to add one to the page count variable. So here I will find a set uh, variable and drag it in here. I'll pick the page count like this. Click this little X here, say page count. And then inside the percentage sign in here, I'll say add one to it. So now we are adding one to it over and over. And this could go on forever if the, um, the PDF file had an unlimited amount of pages. It will not. So this one, when it comes to page seven in our case, this will break and the robot will stop working. So we need to counter for that. So what I want to do here is that I will actually say, well, an out of bound error. That is not really an error that will change my status. Uh, so um, it's not an error that will uh, affect, uh, should affect my workflow in any other way that is to just exit the loop. So down here in the end, I will have a label. I also have a subflow, but I'll pick a label that goes into here. I will give this label out of bound, the name out of bounds like this. Now I can say if this produces an error, then you should just stop here. We could write a message to the status uh, and then it should just go to the label. So just completely exit the loop and go down here. So I can move in here and then I can pick the on error. And I can say uh, all errors. Well, I don't want to look at them. I only want to look at the out of bound error. So expand the advanced, go to the page out of bounds and click that one here. I will not throw an error that will stop my robot if I don't counter for that, but I will continue flow run. And what do I want to do here? Well, I want to go to label and that will be out of bounds. That is the one I created down here. The robot will stop. We know that we have finished the whole thing. So far, so good. And also, just for good practice, we will not use it this time, but I'll change the status to out of bounds. So click new rule here, set variable, and then I'll say out of bounds. Uh, st sorry, status equal to out of bounds like this. And then I can click save. So now the robot will finish after it has extracted the pages that we have in the document, because then this will give us an error. We combat it for the error by saying, go down to this label. And let me just show you, I have my whole project here. Here I have my two original PDFs that will be in the project folder. Let's try to run it and see that everything actually works. So here I'll just pick one of them. I'll say open and now you can see we have the numbers here and my robot will end at the correct place. It's that easy to split a PDF document with Power Automate Desktop. Let's also say that we want to create a lock and we want to create a solution that works on several PDF documents. So a list of PDFs. Let me just delete these. Those ones were the one that we extracted. So we go in here. Let's create a simple lock that will be a list with uh, the files extracted. Then we can count them and create a nice lock. So what I want to do here is that I want to say create new list and then I'll drag it in here uh, above the loop condition. 
I will call it something. I will say extracted PDF files like this, and then I will click save. So I'll create it here. And then each time I extract a PDF document, that will be one of them, then I will take this extracted PDF and add to this list up here. So find and add item to list. And then drag it in right after the extract PDF file pages to a new PDF file. What list do I want to add them to? Well, that will be the extracted PDF files. Click this X here. And what item do I want to add? Well, that was the extracted PDF that got stored here. So that is each separate PDF that I'm creating. I stored into extracted PDF and we will extract it to this page. So find an extracted PDF and then click Save. So now we have a list with these items. Uh, down here, we will create a just a simple doc. So let's just display, have a display message to the user, you can create all sorts of different locks. So down here, I'll just say something like um, uh, that we uh, have uh, split it your for example, your PDF split into and then we will have a count on our list. So that will be the extracted PDF files, expanded and then pick count, click save. And then we can say got split into PDF files, uh, find them here, and then we will just uh, guide the user to the directory. And that will be the selected PDF file up here. That's where we extracted the PDF files. So the selected PDF file, and then just take the directory like this. So now we are uh, done with uh, locking. Let's just test that everything works that we actually get a nice lock. I'll just pick one of them. And then we'll continue with the full solution that can take multiple PDF documents with PDFs in here you can see our PDF split into six PDF files, correct. And we can find a directory here. So far, so good. So we created the solution and let's expand it. Let me delete this again so we can see it works afterwards. So what I want to do up here, either I want a if you created a solution with a variable instead of this display select file dialog, then you need to change it to a list of file path, or I can just go up here. And then I can say allow multiple selection. Now you can see that the variables produced that change to selected files, and this will actually be a list of texts. So if I just go in here, and I'll just say selected PDF files. When I click OK here, or save, then uh, this, ro this robot here, the flow will have several uh, errors. That is because we ha we are dependent on the selected PDF file. And now we have the selected PDF files. So here you can see we have uh, a little bit of errors. Let's uh, fix it. No need to worry. So we need it for each loop. And that one will be for each one of these PDF files up here, then we want everything to happen down here. So I'll find a uh, for each um, right in the beginning. And uh, let me just it's here. And then for each just take a collection that could be our list here, take the items one by one, and then it finished. So what value do I want to iterate, I want the selected uh, PDF files, that is a list. And then let's just storm into a selected file. And that way we can use uh, can do this selected PDF file. And that means that we have a list item and we can refer to that list item by the selected PDF file. When we go to the next list item, we refer to it again by this name. So it looks like this. So now you can see since we created it up here, we have no errors. Now we just need to say we want to start over each time. So that is for each one of the, the, the PDF documents, we start at page one, we set the status to okay, we create a new list. In fact, we do everything, you can argue that we want to create a final lock. But for now, it's okay to have a lock for each PDF document, feel free to change that. What you can do is to click the set variable, go down here, press shift, click the display message and then drag it inside the for each. So now we loop each file up here then for each that is a for each loop. And then we'll say for each one of the pages extracted, create a log, blah, blah, blah. So let's uh, start our solution. And let's see that we can actually have it work with two PDFs. Now I chose two. 
And here you can see we first take the datum. Now we have the log six PDF files, uh, this directory. Now we take the Contoso. It looks fine. Everything works. That is, that's it. If you want the next Power Automate lesson, then click the video up here. I designed it for you. See you.